I'll find all the users that have been uh, set up on this machine. I can find out who they are and then try and crack their passwords. CISA says Canadian computers are vulnerable to attacks. So what would a major attack look like and how can you stay protected? An ethical hacker shares his tips. Welcome back. Well, today the CBC obtained a top-secret memo from Canada's spy agency, a briefing note from 2009, heavily censored, but with one clear message. Be afraid. The threat of cyber attacks has gone up and Canada is vulnerable. The memo said compromises of computer and combination networks of the Government of Canada, Canadian universities, private companies, and individual customer networks have increased substantially. That cyber attacks were one of the fastest growing and complicated issues, and that they're a secure and low risk means to conduct espionage. Well, this realization isn't new, according to FBI's Cybercrime Unit. Hackers have penetrated U.S. electricity grids, stolen intellectual property, corporate secrets, and money. Dozens of countries have now offensive cyberware programs, and our dependence on the Internet, of course, has become a digital danger. <laughs> Cutting-edge computer networks can cut both ways, and governments are worried. It's now clear this cyber threat is one of the most serious economic and national security challenges we face as a nation. They're worried about the power grid. Digital hijackers don't have to walk through metal detectors or occupy a cockpit in order to spark a cyber blackout. They're worried about transportation, the water supply, government, banks and the stock market, one security firm estimated the cost of a coordinated cyber attack at $700 billion. That's roughly equal to 10 Hurricane Katrinas. And experts say the weaknesses are baked into the pie. The basic problem is we never designed the Internet with security in mind. We designed it with a lot of things and a lot of cool features. But security, malicious people inside the system, wasn't a basic consideration. We really assumed everyone would play nice. In May 2009, hackers, thought to be from North Korea, brought down servers of several government agencies. People aren't playing nice. It's a society of warlords. It's a society where you can't rely on a police, on a military to protect you. The Canadian government may be worried about cyber threats, but can they do anything about it? My next guest knows exactly how vulnerable we are. He's a self-described ethical hacker. He breaks into corporate and government networks for a living to find weaknesses and to help improve security. Terry Cutler joins me now from Montreal. Terry, I must admit, I'd never heard of this concept of an ethical hacker before, so enlighten me. What, what's that all about? Hey, Mark. How are you? Good. Uh, so an ethical hacker is essentially a professional who's got the same skills uh, or, or training as a bad hacker only difference is we use our skills for good and under legal contract with the with the client we uh, we get hired to try and break into their system and find all the holes write up a nice fancy report uh, describing where all the vulnerabilities are so that they can better lock it down so I, I love this notion then that you've really got to get into the minds of the hacker and think like the hacker and try to anticipate the hacker so how do you do that so let, let, let me tell you how it all started so back in 2004 uh, I got inspired by watching shows like CSI and 24, and I was wondering, how does Chloe O'Brien break into all these <laughs> systems so quickly? So after doing some research, there's actually a course called the Certified Ethical Hacker. So uh, I, could, I begged and pleaded to my boss, and he sent me to Washington, uh, where it just happened the FBI, the CIA, Navy SEALs, and Lockheed Martin happened to be in the same class as me. So I got a wealth of training in that course. No kidding. And I saw an opportunity to help the public, saying, you know, these guys should really know what's going on here. So I wrote up an article in 2006 about how to protect your identity and that took on a mind of its own. It ended up on the top 10 pages of Canada.com and it's escalated from there. Well tell me one thing because I'm curious to know what what makes the hacker tick? I mean what is this person after? What are they tr really trying to accomplish? I mean I guess the part that really drives us is when you you get to a network and you get an access denied message this is where you say like hmm like I wonder what's beyond this point. Mm -hmm. And uh, from there, obviously using our skills for good and under, under contract, we 
we help the customer try and find out what really is behind that point. Because if you, we can get to that. Yeah, well, we talk a lot about this notion of what could happen, and, and I kind of always roll my eyes at, it, you know, if they bring down the whole electricity grid or, or water system, it could cost us $700 billion. I have no idea, and, and sometimes I wonder if this is all just, you know, scare tactics to get us to improve our security systems. But what what is it in the interest? I mean, what is a hacker really trying to accomplish then if they're going in and trying to get access to places where it should be strictly confidential? It, it's all about, it's all a power trip at this point. You know, we're after intellectual property uh, all the way down to financial gain. So uh, all organized crime has now gone online. You don't hear everybody robbing banks anymore. Everything's all in the digital world now. So if you got you got uh, hydroelectricity uh, firms uh, going online, it's all run by a computer, and it's all running internet protocol IP. Right. So once a hacker gets in, uh, he can have access to that computer and, and do whatever he wants to it. Okay, but I just have my regular old computer, and, and it's not worth you know the information in there. I don't know what value it is. But what should people watching? What should they take away from this conversation in terms of at least improving their own security? Just stop opening up. Uh, these attachments, especially the jokes that your friends sent you, mm -hmm. because there's ways, especially now it's using social media, we can trick end users into opening up links they're not supposed to be opening, especially regarding uh, Facebook. And so if, if, you receive an, if you receive a message that comes from Facebook in your Hotmail, don't open the link from Hotmail. Make sure you go into, hot, into Facebook directly and, and open the email from there. Ultimately, what would they be after from me? Is it, is it banking information, things like that? Well, let's take you as, a, as, a, as an example. So you're on the air constantly. So if I tricked you into opening up an email, I now have access to your computer. And anything you do, like your online banking, uh, maybe personal contacts you have, I can leverage all of that to, to gain deeper in, into, uh, into the stuff you do. Okay, I'm not even going to turn my computer on now, Terry. You've convinced me. <laughs> Terry, thanks so much uh, for talking to us. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me on. Uh, most hackers aren't spies or cyber warriors, they're criminals, plain and simple. And spam and fraud are the everyday threats most of us face. And in an effort to raise awareness, Simnatech released a list of top 10 riskiest Canadian cities based on internet behavior, wireless availability, and the incidence of cyber attacks. Number one was Burlington, Ontario, followed by BC's Port Coquitlam and Langley. Calgary, number five, Toronto came in at number eight. Rounding out the list, Kitchener, Ontario at number 10. And if you want to know how to avoid being hacked, we've put together a list of tips. Check out cbc.ca slash connect and follow the link. And don't worry, it's safe. Opened fire on the encampment of...